Hello, in this video, I'm going to be doing some gradient descent by hand. Um, in particular, we have a simple function f, and um, f takes a parameter um, x and returns a y value for us. Um, y is inside of this module called mystery. Um, if I head over here, you can see that I have a mystery.py file. I could, um, I could show that to you, but uh, that would kind of take away from the fun. And, um, and so let me just try calling it a few times before I actually try to um, do this minimization problem. So I could say, well, what is f of 0? 6.36. Uh, what if I go up to 10? Uh, a much larger number. So I guess 0 is better than uh, n if we're trying to get small outputs. What if I go really negative? Um, well, that's even worse, right? So, you know, I could have a loop and I could try a lot of different values here. Um, but gradient descent is going to be a smarter way uh, to figure this out. Okay. So in particular, right now, if I'm guessing zero, um, it's not obvious. Is it better to try a slightly smaller number or a slightly larger number? Um, so I have some helper code here, which is not too important. Uh, the main thing is, is that it's letting me plot um, kind of a sloped line um, at a given point. And, and so I have this area down here. And, and maybe let me just show you how this thing is going to work. Um, if I want to, I could, um, you know, plot something at, uh, oh, let me say 3, 3, um, a slope of 0. And it would look like that. Um, or I could have a slope of um, 1, or it would be kind of a 45 degree angle. Um, I could move this thing if I wanted. And, and the purpose of this is that um, I'm going to be uh, kind of entering in different guesses to the f function. And each time I enter a guess, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to actually, well, plot the x and y positions of it, uh, but then I use PyTorch to compute the gradient, right? So, so I can plot that line or the position just based on f, and then PyTorch also helps me plot the line through it. And, and because I can plot this line through it and see the gradient, I may be able to very quickly converge on, on the best answer. And you can also see here up at the top that kind of for convenience, uh, I'm plotting whatever that, that last line is. Okay, so, so let's uh, take a crack at this. Uh, maybe I'll just start off at uh, saying, hey, let's try zero. I'll say y equals, I'll do something like this, x equals zero, y equals f of x, and, um, and then I'm going to just plot that point. So I'll just say uh, plot gradient x, y, and then, you know, I don't know what this is yet. I'll just say zero for now, All right? So I can do that. Um, let's actually figure out what the slope is. Um, and so remember, if I want to do that, I have to do a couple things uh, with both X and Y. On um, X, I have to make it a tensor, uh, and I have to say that I want to require a gradient on that tensor. So I can do that like so, tensor. Um, let me just show you what I have did for the imports up here. It was very clear. Um, I had said from torch, import tensor. Um, if I hadn't done that, if I just imported torch, maybe I would say torch.tensor. Um, anyway, I have that, and um, and then uh, there's a couple more pieces here. Um, ultimately, right, what I want to be able to do is I want to say x dot uh, gradient, and uh, the gradient is a slope. Um, if I do that right now and nothing works, um, there's multiple problems. One is that, well, uh, I'm going to have to make this be uh, a real number. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, what's wrong? I'm just trying to plot the slope, and it's none. One of the things I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to say that y dot backward, right? So I've computed y. Uh, this is going to actually help me figure out what the slope is at, at that x and y value. So I'm going to try that. And, um, and what does it say now? It does not require rad. It does not require gradient. And so what I will do to fix that is up here I have to say requires uh, gradient like so. And then it's saying, well, uh, that only works if I have a floating point type, uh, which is easy enough, right? So I can just do that. Like, so maybe I'll just say float of zero, uh, just because I know where I'm going. And then I do all those things, and uh, voila, I can uh, get that gradient. And um, you might remember last time that in addition to these three things that I'm doing here now, um, there's also a, kind of a call where I might zero out the gradient. Um, I don't need to do that because I'm not uh, uh, recomputing uh, trying different x values right now, right? So I don't have to worry about that gradient accumulating there. 
Okay, so that's good. Now, uh, what I might try next, I might try um, another value. It looks like if I'm going to the right, uh, that's where the slope's pointed, so that'll probably be better. Um, but before I do that, let me actually just try to have a helper function that's trying to help me guess these things. So I'm going to call this try, try x. And, um, well, let's just do that. So let's try to take an x value in, and then let's try to do all this stuff. And um, instead of zero, I'm going to have that be my parameter. Um, that's why I said float uh, to make this float instead of saying 0, 0.0, because I knew I was going to be building this function soon. And so now when I do a try x of zero, uh, well, voila, that works great. Um, you know, I can do multiple tries if I want now too. I could try uh, x, you know, 0 0.1, and I see a, a slightly different point. Um, you can see the difference between the red line and the black line. Um, it's kind of always just the way this plot gradient function thing works is that it'll draw the last one as red and then the previous ones as black. Um, so let me do one more thing. I want to say uh, I have a, want to have a function that says try many and then and then this is just going to make it a little bit easier for me to try a bunch in a row. So I'll say for uh, x and values, I'm going to try each of them. Try x, right? So this is just going to help me. I'll try x a bunch of times. And so I could actually do something like this now. I could try many. I try 0. And then I try 0 0.1. And uh, OK, that's kind of the same, same thing. OK, so that was kind of the basic setup, right? of actually um, trying something. Um, but let's actually try doing the, the gradient descent manually. And so when I run this, um, let me think a little bit about this. I guess visually, I can see that I want to move to the right if I want to get a smaller y value. Um, the other way I could do that, right, if I wasn't visualizing it, is I'd be looking at the slope. And um, the slope is negative. So if the slope is negative, that means, well, I guess bigger x is smaller y and I'm trying to minimize y, right? So that means I want a bigger x value. So maybe I'm going to say, well, let's try 2. And um, uh, then I can see those two points, right? I can see, well, uh, what is the slope now? The slope is still negative. It's still pointed down. I guess I want to go farther to the right. And, um, and so I, I guess I jumped two places last time. So maybe I'll jump two again. And, and I head over there. And, and what you can probably see now is that I probably overshot the minimum somewhere between uh, two and four. And uh, maybe going straight to four wasn't such a good idea, right? When you look at, um, at, when I was at zero, right, the slope was much steeper than when I was at two. And so what these gradient descent algorithms will typically do is um, the steeper the gradient, uh, the more you'll jump. The intuition being is that if it's pretty steep, well, it's probably gonna keep in that direction uh, for a while. Anyway, I made the choice I made. And, um, and so I know I have to backtrack, right? So maybe I'll try um, a smaller jump this time instead of jumping two, two. Well, I certainly don't want to jump two again, right? I guess I'd land right back where I started. I'm going to try three right there. I guess I still want to go a little bit smaller, um, but the pretty gradual slope now. So maybe I'll just try uh, kind of going a half step. Oh, what did I do there? I meant to go left, right? I meant to go left like that. I'm going to go that half step. Um, I can see, well, I kind of overshot, right? It's still a very gradual thing. I'm going to try to go just, uh, you know, a little bit to the right this time, maybe kind of in between these two. I'm going to do that. And, um, and sure enough, there I, I reach the bottom. And uh, how do I know it's the bottom? Well, uh, I can see that the slope is zero. It's not always mean it's the bottom, but it looks pretty clear in this case. And so that's kind of a reasonable guess as uh, to what the minimum um, is, right? I mean, it's possible that there's that this is just a local minimum and there's other as elsewhere. Um, I'm going to be talking more about that. Uh, but this found um, a somewhat meaningful uh, minimum. I'm going to let you do one practice of that before we come back and then, and then do another problem.